what is impedance pH metric. Now question is just before I go to the video let me explain to you what is pH metric. In pH metric you detect acid. So if there is a reflux which is acidic. Now that will be detected by pH metric. In impedance, what is impedance? Impedance is electrical resistance. So you have two ports, so let us say impedance port and between these two impedance port current is flowing. Now we know electrical resistance if we put the two port into a liquid the resistance will decrease that means impedance will come down. On the other hand if you put these two port into the gas impedance will increase. So from impedance you will be able to say when the patient is refluxing, is he refluxing liquid or is he refluxing gas? And because there is also pH probe, if it is liquid you will be able to say is it acidic liquid or is it non-acidic liquid. So in impedance port you have multiple let us say 10 or 15 or 16 impedance port and you have two pH port one is kept in the stomach, one is kept in the esophagus. When you put a pro probe in the stomach, what is the advantage? Somebody may not have acid at all because he may be in such a large dose PPI that his acid is knocked out or knocked off. Now if you have a port only in the esophagus and if it does not show acid, you may say this fellow does not have reflux. But if he does not have acid in the stomach, whatever he is refluxing is non-acidic reflux. So I'll just now demonstrate to you the technique of impedance pH metric. So this again was developed with lot of contribution from Dr. Asa Mishra, Dr. Abhay Bharma. In our lab, in collaboration with the School of Telemedicine, SGPJ Lucknow, Rajan Singh, PhD scholar helped a lot and David Warsi who is a computer personal helped in the making this video. So start a new protocol of the patient. So put the patient name. We have actually hidden the name for the sake of ethical issues. Give, a, give the patient ID number. Typically in SGPJ we give CR number or AR number. Then you choose the protocol like here it says 44. 44 means you have a chip and for that this is 44. So this is just what company has instructed. Now on the right hand side you select the key. Why these keys are selected I will tell you. Like the patient during the procedure if she has epigastric pain will instruct her to actually press the key number 1 because in the system we have fed key number 1 means this is epigastric pain. And all this is being done in a chip. So chip we remove from the pH meter or data logger, put it into computer where the software is there and then you are doing all this. So key 3 is hard bar. Okay, so the com compact flash is this one. Look at this, this is the compact flash. Now you insert the flash and 1 is the enter key. So when you press 1, actually it will detect the compact flash. It says card found reading the configuration file. Now all these are like this is starting of the meal, this is end of the meal, this is lying down, this is standing up. These are the keys which patient has to press during the recording. Then you have to do calibration. So it says insert probe in pH 4. The pink fluid is pH 4. So we are inserting the, fluid, the probe into the pH 4 just so to see whether it tells 4 as 4 because that is what is the sort of validation that our pH probe is properly working. So once you have done that like you it says look at this insert probe in pH 4 and see what it does what it tells. Now insert pH in pH 4 and then you press 1, it says pH 4 stabilizing. That means it is seeing that when it has in fluid pH 4 we have inserted, what is the pH actually? It takes some time, like it is counting the time.
So this is port 1. So port 1, we want it to be in the stomach. So it is reading that port 1. Now it says pH 2. This says it is okay. At least reading has been done, but it doesn't tell how much is the pH. It will get that later. And this is the port 2. So now we have to do pH 4 calibration okay. So continue. So this is the continue already chosen. So insert probe in pH 7. So typically we wash this probe in water, wipe it off and then put in pH 7. Directly don't go from pH 4 to pH 7. You just in between put it in the water so that you clean that pH 4 solution. Now it says this is again reading the pH 7 one. So it says pH 1 that is port number 1 is okay. It has already read what is the port number 1. pH 7 calibration okay. Continue. Look at this. It tells pH uh, port 1. Let us see. It is stabilizing. Okay. We will see that. Now subsequently what you do is, okay, look at this. This is the values. So now we have gone to the esophagus. This is the esophagus. That's why pH 1 is showing 6 and pH 2 is saying showing 4. We have gone into the stomach. The second one has gone into the stomach. Both has gone into the stomach. So typically, we go, both the ports should be in the stomach. So we have gone to the stomach and you see both pH 1 and pH 2 shows you value of 3 means we have gone to the stomach. Now then we withdraw the pH probe. You want the lower one to have pH of stomach and the upper one of pH of esophagus. So you are withdrawing. Look at this. Now the upper one is pH of esophagus. Okay. Upper one is pH of esophagus. Lower one is pH of stomach. Now this is done. Like what you do is that you also go by length. Don't go by only drift method pH drift method. So what you do is you do manometry before, you know the LES location and you place the esophageal pH probe set if at least 5 centimeter above the LES. So now see, now what you do is that you fix this pH probe into the nose, connect it to the data logger, instruct the patient all the thing like when she has to lie down, what she has to press, when she has to have meal, what she has to press and all this. And subsequently, 24 hours later, you get back the recorder and you stop recording. So stop recording. So by clicking on one and that bulb key, you can stop recording. So if both keys are uh, click, then it says either continue recording or stop recording. Use this arrow key to come to the stop recording. So arrow key is this lower one. So stop recording, then we will enter one. One is the enter key. One is also event key and enter key. Okay, now you download the data. So what you do is that now connect back to the computer, the flash drive, and then you say download the data or transfer the data. Look at this, this is a transfer key. The moment you click, it will transfer all the data that we acquired during the pH metry and then once you have transfer, go to analyze. So I already told you this is our port, uh, probe like where you have two pro acid measuring probe or pH probe. This is the gastric pH sensor and this is the esophageal pH sensor and these are the impedance probe. Now, I told you already the principle of impedance. When the bolus moves, now there is a drop in the impedance because we know electrical current is better flown in the liquid media. And when the bolus goes out, there is again increase in the impedance. Now, suppose such lowering of the impedance is anti-grade like this, this is swallow. Whereas if the lowering of the impedance is retrograde like this, this is reflux. So you can make out whether it is reflux or swallow, you can make out whether it is liquid reflux or gaseous reflux. So typically this helps very much in a patient of belching. You can make out is it supragastric belching, gastric belching. Now we'll go to the auto scan. You see this is doing auto scan. So in the auto scan mode, 
actually see whole of the record. Typically, this is the gastric pH, this is the esophageal pH, the lower two tracing are pH tracing. And all these tracing are impedance tracing. And if you see, there is a dotted line. This dotted line is for pH 4. Why pH 4? Because pepsin work best below pH 4. That's why they have just put it at pH 4 as a cutoff. Now you see, look at the gastric pH. Much of the time, it is below pH 4. Look at the esophageal pH. Much of the time, it is above pH 4, but there are drops in between, in between and these are reflux episodes. So this is a total 23.9 hour record. So when you want to scan, actually what you do is make the, uh, your, this is what we said is 10 minutes. And scan one by one. Look at this. Already system has given a yellow mark over here and system says there is an abnormality here. We know what is the abnormality. This is gas. Look at that. Impedance value has gone up. And look at the pH value. pH has not dropped below 4. So here is a gas reflux where pH has not gone below 4, but the impedance has gone high. Let us also show some acid reflux. This is again a gas reflux because impedance has gone. But you look at this, the moment gas reflux has occurred, the patient has swallowed and the pH also has. So this is typically a mixed reflux where both gas and the acid has been refluxed because you can see following this increase in the impedance, there is a lowering in the impedance and also pH has dropped. This is a gas reflux followed by an acid reflux. So this is a gas followed by a re liquid reflux. And during the liquid reflux, you can see there is a drop in pH. So this is an acidic, acidic liquid. So you can make out whether it is an acidic liquid or is it non-acid liquid. Typically, this is not an alkali, alkaline recorder. So you don't say alkali reflux. So non-acid reflux. It may be neutral. It can be alkaline. So you scan the whole record of 24 hours like this. This patient also clicked the key of heartburn over here. Look at this. There is a reflux which is acidic because pH has gone down. Impedance also dropped and the patient has clicked on heartburn key. So there's a beautiful correlation where you've got a liquid coming out. The liquid is acidic and patient pressed on heartburn. Whereas look at this. Here patient has pushed heartburn but there is no reflux. So what is symptom sensitivity index? Symptom sensitivity index is when somebody has heartburn, how many times there is a acidification of the esophagus. And if it is more than 50% of the time, that is each time patient says heartburn, more than 50% of the time, if esophagus has become acidic, this is an evidence for reflux. Look at this here again, pH has dropped down, impedance has dropped down, and the patient has clicked on heartburn. This is a mixed reflux. You see some gas, but much of it is acid or a liquid, and the liquid is again acidic, and you can see it is a long duration reflux, at least 30 seconds. This duration of the reflux is determined by esophageal acid clearance. Esophageal acid clearance occurs because of salivation, which we call as water brass, and second is esophageal contraction, which pushes the acid back into the stomach. So we are scanning the whole record like this. So again, there is a drop in the impedance, there is a drop in pH, and patient has clicked on heartburn. She also said abdominal pain. You have to understand, this is an issue, is a major issue. Now, like this patient will tell you abdominal pain, he will say dyspepsia, and he will be given PPI, but basically there is an acidic reflux. And obviously this abdominal pain, heartburn, this is a patient interpretation. Sometimes heartburn can be interpreted as patient pain, epigastric pain, like many of the patient of MI, they say we have epigastric pain. This is well known. So if esophageal pain can be referred to the epigastrium, why can't the, sorry, cardiac pain can be referred to the epigastrium, why can't the esophageal pain go to the epigastrium because they have same innervation. This is a typical gas reflux, but during that time, there is an acidification. And then subsequently you say view report. You see, lastly you say view report, you have scan and there will be a report like this and the job is done. Obviously you have to give final impression on the report. All these record you have to see, there is a standard system. In fact, Dr. Dhiman and Dr. Siras Sarasat long ago did in our center, esophageal pH metrin, 40 healthy volunteer, 
and they were really <laughs> healthy because they had underwent esophageal biopsy, endoscopy, not a good, easy job to convince these healthy people for endoscopy. And then what they did is they determined what is the cutoff for India. And this was published in Digestive Disease Science and we still follow that cutoff for reporting our patient. And this is the total 24 hour record which goes with the patient. So I have given three, we have given three representative reflux. There is an acid, liquid reflux with acidification. There is a gaseous reflux and there is a mixed reflux. Thank you so much.